What is up, bros and broads? Welcome on back to season two of the new and improved Millennial Broke Kitchen. So guys, I actually have a good excuse why I haven't posted in a while, and it's all thanks to you. At the time of filming, we're sitting at 36 subscribers and the YouTube money has been pouring in. So naturally, I decided to knock down a couple walls and completely remodel the place. Shouts to Home Depot. We took this situation from small to bouge, the true millennial dream. We're gonna kick this off with a favorite of mine, Red Denver Omelet. What makes it red? Well, them yahoos at the local store had red peppers, but no green peppers. You ever hear of that? Green peppers are way more common than red. I was damn near ready to throw hands. Anyway. Let's get cooking. So first off, make sure to wash off the pepper. You don't know who's been fondling it. And all we're gonna do is dice up this pepper. I didn't even realize we got a red onion here. It really is a red Denver omelet, but yeah, dice this up as well. First, take a sip of beer though. Oh, and don't cut like I do. Don't cut towards yourself. Cut away from yourself. It's a little safer. Also, don't cut towards your hands. You can leave some of these seeds in if you like a little bit more zip in your omelet. Um, I take most of them out, but we'll leave a couple in just because I'm a little lazy. Quick dice is nice. Then the onion. I think I'm going to go right off the bat here, cut this in half, save half for Taco Tuesday. See, that part looked kind of sketch. It's a little, uh, a little old up there, so we're going to get rid of the top part of this half. Yikes. They don't grow produce like they used to. That half's a little better. Wow. All right, I'm gonna rinse off this board. Let's get the last ingredient going. All right, so the last ingredient we're gonna need is ham in a traditional Denver omelet. I just happen to have some leftover pork tenderloin. Look at that, perfect. If you don't have leftover pork tenderloin, you know, maybe pick up a slab of ham at your local deli. Even cold cut ham will do. Uh, maybe even Canadian bacon. I hear that's just bacon that's been blessed by the Mounties, so probably the same stuff. Go ahead and just give this a dice as well. Wish I had a little bit more, but it's all I can find here. All right, what's that? Eight little cubes of ham? Perfect. Before we get cracking, Let's crack some eggs. This is gonna be a three egg omelet. I like my scrambled eggs like I like my peanut butter, creamy. If you're one of them crunchy psychos, feel free to throw some extra shells into this. We call that the angel share. Guys, check out this stove. This thing's big as hell. These pots aren't even touching. Craziest part is that the scale doesn't even go from two to ten anymore. It's low to high. This is luxury living. All right, so we got the pans down. What we need first, some butter. We got two pans here. I'll show you why in a second. Put a little bit of butter into that pan. A little bit bigger, a little bit more into this, this pan. The size of this pan on the right here is key. Find the biggest circumference pan that you got. And then throw the heat on both of these, about medium, just under medium heat. Actually, I said both of them, but I lied. Just uh, start with the small one, throw some heat on that. And get this butter melted. And then what we wanna do is just uh, saute the little concoction of ingredients we just chopped up. Drink your beer while you're waiting. That's chef orders. All right, eight cubes of ham, handful of onions, handful of red peppers. We're gonna saute this until the onions are just start to get soft. Same with the peppers. 
add a little bit of heat to the equation. Once you start hearing this sizzle, it's a good time to throw the heat on the other pan. About the same medium heat. All right, right about now, we got a nice coating of butter on the pan. You notice we spread that across the whole bottom. You can go ahead and add the scrambled eggs. Again, this was three scrambled eggs. Come to this number after many scientific hungover morning researches. Should be the most optimal volume of liquid egg. And then you see I got kind of a janky pan here and it's not exactly level. What you do is just actually twist the pan around and try and try and get that about as even as you can cooking. Oh, don't forget about your skillet either. Oh she's that was a disaster. Almost just picked that up right off the burner. Oh All right, so this has been going for a couple minutes. You can notice if you start moving this around, you're starting to get a layer built up on the bottom. That's what you're looking for. And what we're gonna do now is since this side is more of a stable base, let's uh, go ahead and add the toppings on that side. All right, this is getting just about there. Hardly any wiggle in it. Um, so we're ready for the last ingredient. You probably already forgot. Some cheese. So what we're gonna try and do, loosen up this side here, break its seal. Once you go for this, you gotta go for it. Oh, almost had it. What we could do, nobody will be the wiser is when we plate this, kind of flop it onto the plate the other way. Nobody even see this side here. So we got the skillet here. Let's see if we could do this properly. Check that out, not bad. Hit it with a little bit of seasoning. We're gonna do some salt, we're gonna do some pepper, we're gonna do a little bit of Italian seasoning for the gram. All right, guys, I cannot wait to try this. Let's see what it tastes like. Mmm. 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 Delicious meal. Turns out great. Pretty quick, honestly, too. This doesn't just have to be a weekend meal. All right, that's all for today's episode. If you liked it, make sure you, you know, tell a friend about it. And uh, top of that, why don't you throw some comments down in the comment section about what you want to see next on Millennial Bro Kitchen.